the country that created Mario Kart. That's a problem with a green turtle shell causing chaos in the airport. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. My name is Mitch, my co-host. Alex, hello. And today we got a great show for you. We got a lot of stories to talk about, so let's get right into it. Uh, the first story that we're going to go to today is about Japan's universities tighten background checks on foreign students. Now this is an interesting story because of, like, okay, uh, we came here as foreign, like, exchange uh, teachers. Yeah. But, like... When you go to and, and where we particularly live here in in, uh, in Japan, there's not so many foreign students, but there are some. But in Tokyo, there's tons of foreign students, and apparently, uh, what's the number? Two hundred and eighty thousand. That's a quarter over a quarter million uh, foreign students in Japan, mm. and over forty percent of these are coming from mainland China. And so officials, I think, are a little worried about the security risk about that because they're talking about. Let's see, where is this? It's like, the survey collected re responses from 56 universities, including those having student exchange agreements with Chinese universities known as the Seven Sons of National Defense, which have close ties to China's defense industry. Uh, okay, so spying, right? So yeah, so basically, uh, Japanese universities are trying to weed out Chinese spies, should really be the title of this news story. Uh, but they can't say that, but that's what it is. And it's hilarious to me because... I don't know, Alex. Do you how much how much spying do you think is coming through exchange students like this? Well, I mean, like when I went to university, I spent three years basically in a pub getting drunk. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't really get much information from anyone. Oh, so what we should do the so how to weed out the spies is to find the students that actually go to the pub and they're like, okay, you guys are cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all right, <laughs> and then the ones who are actually studying. The ones you gotta that, penalize them. The ones that know? have like an inordinate amount of uh, uh, communication equipment in the room. Yeah. It's like yeah, you yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing here? Well, they're all on TikTok now though anyway, aren't they? So, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think spying works this way anymore. It's not like the 007, like, mole in the hole, like, you know, tapping out a secret message to your friend. They just, like, go to social media. Just hacking, right? Anyway. Yeah. Surely they just hack into the university computers and just steal everything from there. I guarantee you that the defense of Japanese computer networks is zero. Like if you wanted to hack everything in Japan today, you easily could. I've seen so many people with post-it notes with the password on the monitor. <laughs> you know, this is still a thing. Even though you tell Wait, people not to do you, it. You right? had to do a thing at the prefecture the other day and they had to contact you on the Zoom computer. Yeah, because they only had one. <laughs> yeah. That's shared between everybody on the floor. So that's about 150 people. With the one Zoom computer. With one Zoom computer. Wait, wait. If they uh, all have to Zoom at the same time, do they just all crowd up in a big non, like, Corona, COVID, what is it, social distancing situation? Yeah, I guess it's like a kind of a festival vibe going <laughs> in front on there. Of the webcam. Yeah. Uh, there was a story about a couple years ago, the head of the cybersecurity in Japan was giving a speech in and answering questions in front of the diet. And suddenly, like, his answers seemed to, like, not jive with what computer networks do. And people are like, do you know what the hell you're talking about? And so they quizzed him, right? And it's like this 80-year-old some whatever guy. And he's like, to tell you the truth, I've never used a computer in my life and I've never used email. Yeah, he had somebody to do it for him, right? Yeah, he's yeah. the head of cybersecurity in Japan. And after that, like... All the headlines are like, Japan minister says that he is the most secure cybersecurity whatever leader because he doesn't use a computer. And you're like, wow. Mind you, there's a new digital transformation division in the government. and um, the Oh woman my God, did you see the, the infographic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the woman that's leading it tweeted something and she used a stock image with the, the kind of pickster, <laughs> you know, watermark across she it. She stole an image. Stole it off a Japanese stock image site. And uh, the CEO of that company tweeted her and said, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. So. The, the, the best part of that presentation, if you guys aren't, uh, for those who are unaware. So the, Japan made this, let's just call it bureaucratic red tape on the Internet agency, uh, where they literally uh, have an infographic that shows like two versions of the Internet. And one is like 
internet in chaos. It's got all these servers that are communicating like a web because it's freaking web. That's how it works. And they're like, look at this pristine model that we made over here where all the companies go through a centralized government server and then out to the other companies after that. And you're like, that's not, that's not going to make anything better. It's going to make everything so much worse. It's going to be like the great bottleneck of Japan. No, no, thank you to, um, you know, government involvement in uh, web. One of the big reasons to live here is the internet. The internet here is amazing. It's very fast, yeah. Right? Yeah. If they, dude, if you guys screw up the internet, we're out of here. We're gone. I'm just, maybe. Yeah, to where? Korea. They've got good internet. Let's, we can get Starlink, though. Yeah, that's The true. Elon Musk thing? Yeah, yeah. Just go straight to space. Yeah. yeah. Screw you. Yeah. Japanese agency. What are, what are they going to do when that happens? I don't know. Somebody Outlaw else's, it? Yeah. You know, put a big shield across the top of Japan so the, the <laughs> signal bounces back down again. Like a modern, a modern version of uh, Sakoku. Sakoku? Sakoku? Sakoku, yeah. Sakoku? The yeah. isolation period, just like dome it off. Like a net bubble. Yeah. Didn't the Simpsons do that? Maybe. I think they did. They blocked out the sun. Burns did. It was like a plot point. Right. Okay. This has done everything. Um, okay, let's move on. So, Japan, good luck in weeding out uh, foreign spies by being more stringent with Chinese students. Well, if they're good spies, you're not going to find them anyway. So. <laughs> You know, if I was China, and I would, I, if, I, if I thought like the foreign exchange student angle was the way to go for spying, mm-hmm. right? I, it's not, but let, let's say it is. In that situation, I would just go into like Nepal or the Philippines and find pe- recruits there, mm. pay them crazy money because China's rich as crap right now. Be like, here's a million dollars for your family. Come and spy in Japan and, you know, pretend not to be Chinese because you're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how would they get caught? Yeah. True. Right? Yeah, yeah. If you're Chinese national, it's pretty obvious, right? Right. But see, the, the real thing is, is like, look, look, listen to me here, Japan security agency, whoever's in charge. They're not coming in through the universities. All of the individuals in Japan are uploading TikTok videos like every single day to the TikTok server, which is owned and operated by the Japanese or the, the Chinese military, basically. So they're giving you location data. They're giving you like spatial awareness. All the spying that you ever needed to know is all going on TikTok. You want to stop the spying? Get rid of TikTok. <laughs> But, you know, we love our TikTok. I love TikTok. Dude, I'm so addicted to TikTok these days. I don't use it, man. Uh, it keeps showing me the same thing over and over again. Boobies. Yeah. But, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, yeah. It's, it's cool as long as they're, you know, appropriately aged. My thing is, like, TikTok you, uh, content generators tend to be really young. Too young. For mm. All right, Alex, go to our next story. All right, cool. We've got one about COVID. So Japan's donating 30 million additional doses of COVID-19 vaccine to uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, And these are all AstraZeneca Mm. um, doses that they've actually made domestically. Yeah, they started producing them domestically like like almost at the beginning of the year, I think. Yeah, something like that. So they've obviously got a surplus and they're giving 30 million of these to people in other countries. So, you know. That's really good. Um, I think the top three nations that are giving out uh, the vaccines to, uh, to poorer countries are the United States, obviously, uh, China, who's giving out Sinovac, which I guess if you didn't have access to anything else, cool. Um, and then uh, AstraZeneca from Japan are the three big ones. Isn't England in it as well? UK. I think the UK is in, there's like a, I think most of the Western countries are in some giant program where they're all doing it together. I think the United States is also part of that. Right. Right. UK was, uh, well, you guys, your vaccination rate was one of the highest and one of the fastest. I think it's like Israel, and it, I forgot like the top three, but the UK is always up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we rock. Yeah, we're great. We're great. Um, <laughs> my parents actually had the AstraZeneca one first. Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they, so. did they do the mix and match thing? No, no, it's all AstraZeneca all the way. Uh, yeah, so they're going to have the third shot next hmm, next month. month you, you had a visceral reaction to the second shot. Are you going to go for the third? Uh, I don't know. I'd rather not, but I guess maybe... I have to. I actually had a bad reaction to the Moderna virus uh, vaccine. Sorry. Um, so after about ten minutes after I was injected with that, I went really dizzy. Can um, you can you get your booster from Pfizer or something different? Uh, I could try that, but you know, I don't know what caused the first one. I did go to the hospital, but you know, they didn't have any information about it. So. Yeah, they say that like most of the reactions to the mRNA vi- uh, vaccines happen within the first. I Got what it is like few months so if it doesn't have if, if you like get out like the first couple of, maybe it's the first couple of weeks or something like that so yeah. if you get out of that you're basically good yeah i thought the first one wasn't so bad for me so i didn't really have any problems bit of arm pain yeah. and then the second one after i had it done um about 15 minutes later i felt really dizzy yeah and i never had that before with any kind of injection um so i was like going to the nurse going hey i'm, I'm not feeling so good and she goes, uh, okay, can you stand up? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she goes, how are you feeling now? I was like, well, a little better. She goes, yeah, just go home. 
So I was like, what? Wait well, a minute. They need to be, check. Because most of the reactions to the mRNA vaccines, I think, are mostly in older people. I think they're probably just worried about that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So a young strapping man like you, actually, they're like, go home, you samurai. You're fine. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, <laughs> you know, terrible. But yeah. they say that if you, I forgot what some news was talking about, like, depending on your reaction to the vaccine could mean that you would have had a really bad rea a reaction to the virus or something like that. That's possible, you know, but I mean, at the end of the day, I had kind of shortness of breath and yeah. like palpitations in my chest and stuff like that. I weird. think that's just because you're raging at work, man. I think you're just stressed out. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, but I want to get it checked out anyway, right? Yeah. Next one, just get Pfizer and see. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can mix them out. Some. I mean, like yeah. um, one of our teachers who's living in Canada right now because he's waiting to ship him in. He got Pfizer Moderna or Moderna Pfizer. One right. Of those. He got the, he mixed and matched. In a, there, there's they thought there was some benefits doing that, but they turned out that apparently the best case scenario for Delta is two Modernas. Right. Okay. The best case. And then obviously a third booster afterwards. And that booster, I think, is actually pretty necessary because we, um, some of our teachers needed to do something that were maskless uh, the other day. And so uh, we gave them uh, antibody tests just, yeah. and antigen tests just to see if they were currently infected, you know, just, just make sure. And of course they weren't. Um, but one of the pe persons that was involved in this, in what they were doing, um, was a medical student who had been injected with Pfizer months ago. Yeah. Like maybe six or seven months ago or something like that. Maybe six months ago. And if you look at the, it's a little, you know, uh, blood test. And then you get a little line, just, you know, if you have antibodies in your system. Mm -hmm. The two that got their shots recently had strong antibody lines. Right. The one that got it months ago, he had a line, but it was kind of faint. Right, okay. So there is a diminishing return. Whether or not that protects you from the virus, I'm, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that there is a difference, it seems. I think the only thing I would say is that don't go to a mass vaccination center. I think mm. it's a terrible idea. I think it's better to get it at a hospital, you know, where you're going to get decent care. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you are injecting yourself with something that is tested, but tested over a relatively short span of time and also has the agenda of needing to be pushed out quickly. Well, it was so, before, I, but not now. I mean, I, everything's got full approval. I think even in your country, my country as well. But regardless of that, <laughs> the, if some people are reporting having side effects yeah. and they're not being taken seriously, uh, that's a big problem. Well, I, I, I'll back you up on the get, go to a doctor thing because um, I went to a hospital to get by. Um, and then other uh, staff members of our, of our company went to a mass vaccination site. Mm. And uh, just the level of care. So if it's if it's... Uh, if it's a, if you're uh, able, obviously, I mean, obviously, vaccination is the most important thing. But if you're able, uh, yeah, I go to an actual local healthcare provider. I think the only thing is you've got to be a bit careful. Is that people, as soon as they think that you're going to say something anti-vaccine or something like yeah. that, everybody goes mental on you. But it's been politicized, especially in America, right? Yeah, yeah. but if you've got genuine concerns about it, yeah. you should talk to a medical professional. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? But. Most of them don't have the time to talk to people. Uh, that is the, the big sites anyway. So there's no education and there's no care, which is a bad combination of, you know, but trust. It's, it's also building. a one-off thing, right? Because once we get over this pandemic, it's like if you need to get a, you know, a COVID uh, vaccine in the future, it's going to be like one-off, one-off kind of thing. Like, yeah, like yeah. it's been until now for regular vaccines. So. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, study rewrites understanding of modern Japan's genetic ancestry. Okay, before we jump into this, this is... This is like uh, vaccines are for Trump supporters. Um, this is a hot topic uh, news uh, issue because let, let me give you a little like anecdote. Uh, 14 years ago, I was sitting in an office uh, of educators at a board of education and I was talking about the immigration of the world's immigration, right? Over years, we all know that the creative life was in Africa, right? The, the, the uh, the first we call it the genetic Adam and Eve came from Africa, and then you see all of the 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 world's immigration migration that's the right word migration going up through you know Asia coming over to Europe and going you know down through uh, the bottom of Africa and you know all that stuff. You can look this up; it's 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 pretty well understood. And we figured this out through genetic mapping, right? Um, you know that if a person in like let's say England, I think this is true. Don't quote me on this, but a person in England. Um, they have genetic markers that are related to the Chinese. So they think that the migrate the migration went from Africa through Upper Asia to England, to Europe and England. Um, so we know that that's where these these you know lines came, how, how these people moved around. When I was explaining this to a room full of supposed educators fourteen years old uh, fourteen years ago in Japan, I got uh, a, the weirdest response from one of the people, and she was like, "No, that's not what happened." And I was like, "Well, where do you think the Japanese people came from?" And she's like, "We came from the sun." And I was like, oh, well, that's good. <laughs> just like, 
because they're in in some in their mythology in some uh like historical i'm not making fun of this okay i'm just saying that it, let, let's just separate mythology from actual science fact here but like in the japanese mythos there's like the god came down and descended to kirishima um on a mountaintop um and that's the i don't want to get into too many hot topic gonna get killed if i say these things issues but there's a lot of people who who believe that the the japanese people were the descendants of straight from heaven from god kind of thing um and so it's like you know come from the sun basically like and I was just like, okay. And there's like kind of consensus in this board of education that like Japanese people, this is 14 years ago, the Japanese people were their own unique species and they have nothing to do with the rest of Asia. Like we'd not, we did not come from China or from Korea. We are our own thing. And I was like, okay. Now when we know this, this, this uh, breaking story, we knew before that the, the Jomon Jidai, which we've actually mentioned this in joking in mm. the past, Jomon Jidai, which was what, 17,000 years ago or no. 1,700 years ago, right? The Jomon Jidai period. Um, we know about 13% of the Japanese uh, DNA comes from there. Uh, then another 16% comes from the Yayoi period, which is about 900 BC. So you've got these two giant migrations to Japan. But the vast majority, and we found this out by, by looking at the uh, DNA of, of uh, very, very old, uh, long, long, like, I don't know what to call them corpses, but like basically Japanese people who lived hundreds of years ago. Um, and we saw that 71% of the, the DNA from there comes from what's known as the, uh, they came over as the, it's known as the Ku, Ku, Kofun period here in Japan. That's like marked by those giant Kofun, what are they called? Grave, tombs, grave tomb, tombs. tombs yeah. They look yeah, like yeah. a keyhole. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this DNA came from uh, basically China, mm -hmm. which is not, we don't want to, we don't want to mix this up. There's like China, the country now and China, the area. Okay. It's not the same thing. Um, but these are the Han people that originally that that came in, in like this third wave around 300 AD and mixed together with all those other DNA uh, previous you know inhabitants of the island and became what's known as the Japanese people we know today. So, like that teacher saying, people came from the sun. She might have been, she wasn't, but she might have been talking about the fact that we're all made of stardust, man. Oh you know. my god, dude, you just got super deep. Yeah. If you guys don't know this, scientifically speaking, the, the atoms that make up the human body are produced in the furnace of stars. We're literally made up of stardust. Yeah, I feel like it now. <laughs> um, yeah, so the kind of genuine understand the general understanding of this was that the Jomon people, you know, the uh, hunter-gatherer types, yeah. and the Yayoi, um, you know, people who moved into Japan or during the Yayoi period, who brought rice farming, yeah. worked rice farming with them, kind of blended together and made the, the kind of Japanese people as they are. So the kind of longer, slender faces of the kind of rice farming people and the kind of rounder, you know, um, more tanned skin, you know, heavier set brows and things like that, the Jomon people. Um, you can see that across the regional differences in Japan, apparently. So there's more kind of Jomon looking features in Kyushu, I heard. Ah, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, this is before that this new genetic information came yeah. out. So this, you know, new stuff, it's not particularly surprising to me, you know, that people would come to Japan just from, you know, next door. Yeah, the thing that's right there, like Korea um, and China. <laughs> considering they all use the same style of writing and everything as well. Yeah. But, you know, for some Japanese people, it might be a bit of a shock. But, yeah. I was having a chat with somebody the other day, and they said, um, uh, they were joking, and they were going, which Koreans do you like best, North or South? And I was like, uh, I like East Koreans. I call them Japanese. <laughs> yeah. So people migrated from Korea, from China, from lots of different places, probably Malaysia, yeah, that kind yeah, of area yeah. as well, up north, you well, know, and settled here eventually. So. What are they called? The Ainu. The Ainu people, they were, I, I'm, this, I'm really going off memory on this one, but they're like an indigenous people that lived in the area, in the islands of Japan. They're basically like a, I don't know if they were the original people who lived here, but like they have kind of like a, they're like I don't want to compare cultures, but they're like an Eskimo kind of like, uh, tribal mm. kind of like people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe we can. I don't know if we want to compare them to the American Indians, but something like that. The Ainu pe people and so, I knew it. Is that what they're called? I knew. I knew. Inuit. Inuit. I, yeah. I knew. So the Inuits, the Ainu, and the kind of North American, you know, native people and things like that do have some kind of similar yeah, background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that they do. Whether that's tribal or whatever, I don't know. But it just fact checks us. According to Wikipedia, it says the Ainu people are the uh natives of hokkaido oh okay well that makes sense i mean hokkaido russia alaska that whole area 
cold. So they like bears a lot. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, like, you guys didn't know this, right? You didn't know that they had, like, these native people. Well, maybe you did. I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. Did you just make a joke? Yeah. <laughs> I went up there, actually. I went to Akan, Lake Akan, to meet some Ainu people. Yeah. And, you know, hang out about with them. Quite fun. Hey, there was something in the news that they recognize the Ainu people as something, something. Maybe they gave it a World Heritage Site, something, something. I don't know. But, you know. I got an Ainu hangover cure. <laughs> Uh, this guy picked it off a tree and mashed it into some tea for me. Yeah, did it, it work? Uh, my face went numb. So <laughs> yeah, guess so. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, we got another story here. Okay, so this one is is I don't know I don't know how to feel about this one, uh, Alex. I'm, I'm waiting for your your reaction on this one. So. Uh, there's this uh, World Expo that's happening in 2025, and uh, basically they want to fly people in flying cars from Universal Studios to Yumeshima Artificial Island, where the where, where the venue of the World Expo is going to be held. Um, and they're supposedly they're basically they're like these. You could think of them as being like a if you had like a drone, okay, like a, like a you know those video drones that everybody has now. Um, it, you ex enlarge it by about a hundred times mm -hmm. and you put a human in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's the technology that we're talking about here. And they're saying that these are much safer than standard helicopters for reasons. They don't really say why. Um, and this is a, a joint venture between sky. Its name is skydive. Is that right? Yeah. Sky, sky drive. drive. Sorry. Sky dive. It's a terrible name. Sky drive. Sorry guys. Um, and the, uh, Osaka, City of Osaka and the Osaka pre prefecture is basically, mm. and um, they want to. I think these are automated. I don't think that they're. I, I think they're like remotely controlled. I hope. Mm. Um, so, yeah, self driving cars <laughs> like are not a thing yet. They are just not here. Yeah, that's a reason why that is is they've not been adopted properly. But you know, well, I don't think. Do you think you could have a self driving car in Japan? Like I humans struggle to understand what's going on in the street and you give that to a car well i think they could do it but everybody would need to do it at the same time right uh, you know a human in the mix is going to mess things up so isn't that one of the the action scenes from irobot where like you know uh what's his name will smith will smith he's like i'm gonna go manual and everyone's like oh my god don't do that manual. yeah 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 <laughs> but uh i don't i just don't know like i think that on the highways and like major thoroughfares in in japan you could do it but i don't think i think once you get to the inaka like oh, the, the little countryside? Roads. Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. a car should be automated in those areas. Yeah, man, I was at a cafe today and I could not get out of the car park. Somebody in a Jeep Wrangler yeah. parked diagonally in front of the entranceway. So I literally had the width of my car I had to fold in the mirrors to try and get it out. It was a nightmare. One of my staff has a giant Jeep and I asked her if she's got truck nuts on her Jeep. She's, yeah. she's a Japanese woman, right? She's like, what are truck nuts? Right. And so I'm like in the car with like my staff, two of which are female. I'm trying to explain to them the concept of truck nuts. And they're like, do you guys have truck nuts in England? No. <laughs> it's an American thing. Yeah, it's definitely in a South Ameri South of America thing. I can't see flying cars working, man. I mean, that's a short distance um, from, where is it, Universal Studios to Mishima. Yeah. It's not that far, I don't think. So, you know. Well, didn't they have, like, robotic cars in the Olympic Island or whatever that was called? The Olympic whatever bubble. And then, like, one of them hit an Olympian. Did it? Yeah. Well done. <laughs> like, because he's got to be moving pretty fast I, if he's a real Olympian. You Josh, know what I mean? you got to you got to fact check me on this, but I'm pretty sure that it was a Paralympian. Really? Maybe. Maybe I'm mixing stories. Sometimes that happens in my brain. But one of the self driving cars got into a little bit of a accident. Did you find it? Um, it says Toyota autonomous autonomous bus hits Tokyo Paralympian, taking him out of match. Really? I fucking told you, man. Yeah. Not only did they hit an Olympian, they hit a Paralympian. It's like the worst case scenario. Yeah, it says it was in the athletics village. Yeah, little little bubble that they made. You know, the, their COVID-19 bubble. My God. Yeah, dude, if you can't get your little completely controlled bubble down, mm. don't put those on the... I mean, in the West, I'm, 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 I'm confident that self-driving cars will work in America and probably in England and places like that. Not Asia. I don't, well, I don't know. It depends on the infrastructure. Don't know. There's a lot of windy little roads that kind yeah. of, uh, you know, one vehicle wide. Well, will the road know, uh, sorry, will the car know what to do when you've got the Japanese guy waving a baton to tell you not to run into the millions of blinking cones in front of you? 
Yeah, I've this, uh, what makes me laugh is, uh, was it you that told me the other day there was like a guy with a baton waving it, Yeah, you know, to direct the traffic, yeah. and next to him there was like an automatic robot doing the same thing. And, and like, I looked at a dude and I was just like, you're seeing the, the, the automation of your job. Like, he's like looking over his shoulder at this robot, like, yeah. there, there goes my job. <laughs> Uh, I'd love if he kind of flipped out like a Luddite and smashed it with his, uh, you he, know, glowing the, stick. The number of people who know the word Luddite is just seemingly going down. Because, like, I say this word a lot and people are like, what's a Luddite? I'm like, how do you not know history? Yeah. Well, it's uh, from my part of the world, so you know what I mean? Well, it's still a, a valid word. Um, so getting back to flying cars. Okay. Uh, Elon Musk, CEO of, of uh, Tesla, SpaceX, everything, the boring company was asked, do you think that we should have flying cars? Because, you know, he wants to put the cars in the ground and have mm -hmm. them tunnel, you know, like ants. Um, and he asked, he was asked the question, like, what do you think about flying cars? He's like, humans can't even do X, Y. Why would you put Z, the mm. third dimension, into it? He's like, everybody's just going to be dying. Mm. And I, I can see that. I, I don't think humans, I think if it's a fully automated system, flying cars might make sense. But the second you give it, like you said, to uh, control to a human, it's not a good idea. Having said that, though, I mean, if you look at the global network of flights, aeroplanes going around the world, you know, there are an awful lot of planes flying up in the sky um, with a very, very low rate of collision accident. It's yeah. safer than driving. Yeah. So, you know, there is an argument for, you know, three dimensions of space being safer simply because you've got so much more space. But that's what you, that's, you, you have to account for the incredible infrastructure of control that goes behind that and the oh, training. True. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you have a flying car, it's not going to be you driving it. Yeah. You know, there's no way that would if happen. If it was a centralized computer doing it all, that's fine. Yeah. But just don't have that computer run by the agency of, what was it? The technologic, what was it called? What did they call themselves? Yeah, the, the, the digital chore. Yeah, the digital agency. Yeah. Or Kagoshima Prefecture with their one Zoom PC. Yeah. You know, the, the best part about going into the government offices in Japan is seeing all the Windows XP computers. And you're just like, guys, that was like Windows 7 was it was also like support for that was like, you know, is gone. Like, what are you guys doing? The security. Every I wonder if anybody uses Windows ME. That's, that'd be brilliant. me. Windows me. The yeah. best one. Dude, I, I got this video from a friend. It's like it's called the mo the nerdiest, uh, the nerdiest 90s video you'll ever see. And it's a bunch of like kind of fat nerds like waiting in front of a comp USA to get their first copy of Windows 98. Right. And then, like, the news is like, why are you so excited, sir? And, like, this kind of, like, let's just call him an incel, was like, Fat32, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God. It's wow. the best video. Yeah, guys, we'll maybe link it in the, in the description if I can find it, but it's the best. Uh, speaking of flying, you have a story. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, what are we looking at now? Narita Airport. Yes, my favorite place. I know Mitch loves Narita Airport, so uh, if you want to find out why, have a look for a video on um, the the riots. war the, the war for Narita. It's the, on our channel. Check yeah, it out. It's check it out, freaking man. amazing. So uh, here we got a story. Turtle holds up air traffic at Narita Airport. So apparently there was a turtle found on the uh, international airport runway um, serving Tokyo, which prevented aircraft from taking off on Friday. Um, and one of the planes that was actually stuck because of this turtle had a turtle design on it as well. <laughs> so it's like meta as anything else. But, you know, apparently they found the uh, the turtle. It's uh, a Hawaiian-style <laughs> sea green turtle. It's a Hawaiian-style sea green turtle. Oh, no, sorry. That's on the fuselage of the plane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not the actual turtle. It says the turtle was dark green, about 30 centimeters long, and about two kilograms in weight. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently it came from a nearby reservoir. So, 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 okay, let's just digest this for a second. First of all, okay, the, the country that created Mario Kart, right, has a problem, <laughs> yeah. has a problem with a green turtle shell, <laughs> or I guess there's still a turtle in it. Yeah. Like, causing chaos in the airport. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, one of the airplanes has a giant turtle, Hawaiian-style turtle, written on it. This would have been even better if it would have been Central Tokyo and Mari Car, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the Mario Kart experience You know, they got thing. sued. Yeah, they got sued to out, death. Yeah, out of existence. Yeah, don't mess with Nintendo. $13 million or something like that they had to pay. If you guys didn't know, like, there used to be this tourist attraction in Tokyo, which I thought was amazing and Alex hated. Yeah, I hated it, yeah. It basically, you pay a fee, they give you a Mario Kart outfit and then they give you an actual mario kart like a street legal go-kart and you drive around the streets of tokyo causing havoc wherever you go see before covid right i was up in tokyo a lot so i'd go walking around and you'd see these groups of people blazing around in the mario car things right yeah 
And I was stood at Amortisando crossing once to go over. I think it was Amortisando. And they all just came burning past. And all the Japanese people looked at them going around the corner like, eh. And then they looked at me for some reason. <laughs> like, you would like to do this, wouldn't you? At that point, yeah. you should have pull, pulled out a turtle shell. And I was, yeah, <laughs> chucked it in the road. And I was like, no, that is not what I want to do. <laughs> Um, but there's certain things in Tokyo that I think should remain there. One, the Mario Kart thing. And two, you can pay for your own paparazzi. Have you seen this? I think I might have done, yeah. You pay like $1,000 or something like that. And like you get, an, I think it's one hour, you get two or three guys in suits right. to follow your white ass around mm -hmm. and to pretend like you're some famous Westerner. Right, okay. And they like taking all these pictures of you and asking you questions and shit. And yeah. so then the, 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 the locals, they're like, oh my God, who's that guy? And then they pull out their phone and they're taking pictures of you and shit. There was one in Osaka as well at a theme park, one of these old theme parks, and you could pay for somebody to come and beat you up, like Yakuza type people, to attack what? you and try and steal your girlfriend, and then you fight back and like knock them out and and walk off again. I, I can see so many legal problems with that. I know, yeah, <laughs> but it was a, it was a thing, man. It was on a proper proper thing, you know. The reason yeah. why I think that there's so many crazy ideas that happen in Japan is the uh, the rate of alcoholism here. Uh, yeah. Like, people, seriously, they probably just, like, get really, really drunk, and you're like, you know, what would be a really good idea? And then the next day, remember that shit and do it. It's funny, because on one side, you've got massive bureaucracy and yeah. loads of rules, and on the other side, it's just basically do whatever you want, you know? Yeah. So. There are weird places where the Japanese government is just like, we are not concerned about this real big oversight in regulation. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get back to this turtle. How long do they hold up the, the, the best airport in japan so it says five flights were delayed for up to 15 minutes um and the passengers and crew took off in buoyant mood despite the delay buoyant yeah buoyant so they were really happy about it buoyant means like floating right yeah like yay happy but you know 15 minutes isn't that long anyway yeah and if you got an announcement saying a turtle on the runway i think you'd uh you know be all right with that i would so as long as it's not as long as it's not Perfect, uh, purposely put there by like the descendants of the people who were like attacking Narita before. I mean, it could have been. It could have been bred for that purpose of like yeah. screwing up fifteen minutes of flights. You know, it's uh, being slowly released now. There's going to be hundreds of them. <laughs> hundreds of them marching slowly across the runway. Uh, guys, it's been our news show today. Uh, I think that we've covered all the topics this week. I don't think there's anything. Oh, there was one more that we could have gone to, but it was like. The, you know, there's like the royalty thing where the princess is getting married to her boyfriend. Yes. I think she, it's the thing she's a princess. And they're like, the, the big news story this week where they've just been on an NHK and whatever all week long is like, they're like, the, prince and the, the princess and her boyfriend have refused wedding money from the government. And then the government officiates the refusal of wedding money. And you're like, whereas British royalty would be like, ah, going to pay for everything. That's nice. No, they wouldn't. They always said they go on about how they're not going to take any cash and, um, you know, show off about it. So, but the thing is, the difference between UK monarchy and the one in Japan is that the one in the UK is interesting to people in America. It's on Netflix. Yeah. But the one have, in you, have you watched The Crown? Yeah. Is it good? It's all right. Um, it, it stole a lot of awards at the uh, Oscars or whatever that award thing was. Recently. Yeah, it does always does well at the award ceremonies and stuff like that. When it started out, the first series of it, I spoke to some people who worked at Buckingham Palace and asked them if it was accurate or not. And they said, you know, it's, it's kind of accurate. You know, it's obviously a fiction, but it, it's kind of there. So they said it's pretty interesting to see parts of Buckingham Palace featured in it as well. Uh. So they actually were watching it, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, and then I don't know about the later seasons. I think it's gone off the rails a little bit, but you know, is the, it is this is like Japanese yakuza where the actual yakuza in Japan were watching the yakuza movies, and then art imitates life, imitates art. Yeah. So the yakuza in Japan started dressing like the yakuza in the movies. Right, right, right. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, that looks cool. Let's do that from now on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I don't. I, I honestly don't know anything about Japanese royalty. Every time the t people talk about it, I just I know two things. One, I'm not interested in. Two, I shouldn't say anything about it. Well, it's serious, isn't it? It's always serious, and um... well, it's because the people who care about it are the ones that care about it too much. Yeah. Generally, no one gives a shit except for the ones that really, really care about it because it's like religious to them, right? And you're just like, I'm not touching that. You have whatever views you want on whatever, and I don't care. I don't even know their names. I actually don't even know the name of the new emperor. <laughs> Mm, no, I don't either. Actually, I probably don't think of that. it. Probably Mind you, most people don't. I don't know. Like, some people who are really not interested in politics just don't pay attention to it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just not 
interested whatsoever in royalty. Like, I don't know. I get it in England. It's like a tourist attraction. And t- I mean, both weddings of the two ki- the two boys, whatever their names are, were like huge international like media sensations. I think they got better ratings than the Olympics or whatever. Mm. Right. So I get that. But aside from that, like, what is royalty good for? Well, it's like a cult of celebrity, but with culture attached to it. So yeah. in America, we don't have the celebrity. We just have like the Britney Spears people. Yeah. Which we like to destroy their lives using, you know, paparazzi. Dude, I couldn't believe how aggressive paparazzi can be. Like, you know, you watch like the behind the scenes of the paparazzi videos. You're like, wow, that's really like, that should be illegal. Yeah. Well, they've got to get the shots, right? You know. Yeah, we'll go home, get your, your little five bucks or whatever for the picture. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, that's been our show today, guys. We've been talking about flying cars, turtles, and Jomo and Jedi. DNA. <laughs> If you guys like today's show, uh, leave us a comment. If you guys have suggestions for future news topics or whatever, let us know. Uh, one of the comments from, I think, last week's show was to talk about LGBTQ issues in Japan. I think we might do a show on that in the coming future. Um, but whatever you guys want us to talk about, let us know in the comments. And uh, give us a like, give us a share. If you enjoyed today's show, see you guys next week. We're all star people. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>